All right, welcome back, and uh, we're here with Grant Harrison, Greed Finance and ESG Analyst at GreenBiz. Welcome, Grant. Thank you, John. Thank you, Deanna. Got the custom microphone set up here. Great to be here on the other end of the questions at Sidebar. Yeah, so I'm super excited to talk to you. Greenfin is going to be in person this year. What are you most excited about for the inaugural in-person launch of that event? I've been uh, using a loose definition of inaugural. We technically had our first Green Fin event last year online. I think some events really thrive in an online digital setting. I think some events really need the in-person element. I would put Green Fin in the in-person camp. Green Fin 21 was a total success, but I'm very excited to bring this, what is essentially a new community together. Uh, folks will know that we used to do a Green Fin Summit attached to this event, um, and we can get into that in a little bit. But I'm most excited to, yeah, put some, it's kind of been an interesting parallel where at the same time that we spent two years kind of professionally and, and personally isolated, the ESG space has absolutely boomed. I'm kind of getting tired of hearing myself say boom, but it's still booming, so I'm still saying it's booming. And the community hasn't really been able to form. Like all the kind of nodes that make up the ESG ecosystem have been able to communicate one-to-one -one and build the space, but haven't really been able to come together to, to do what happens when you come like to GreenBiz. This case in point right now, the, the magic, I would say, of we bringing people together in person, not in pixels, is really palpable here, to throw a couple P words at you. So, uh, yeah, excited for this particular group in New York come June. Okay, so like you said, we've had a couple of Greenfin summits, we had the online, but so it's going to be new when we're in person. Well, um, the Greenfin summits were logically attached to the Green Biz event because we have a preponderance of corporate sustainability leads in big companies who are providing the information to the investors who make their sustainable investing decisions based off of the information provided by the sustainability issuers. Uh, I think what's going to be notably different is the community makeup. Uh, I'm already kind of scanning through the, the invite requests that are rolling in at this point, and what I'm particularly excited about is the folks who are showing up in large part are investors or lenders, more so than they have showed up at the summits. And they're not people with ESG or sustainability in their title, which I know there's a trope of like, part of sustainability is we want to put ourselves out of a job. Nobody worry, we're not quite there yet. We have plenty of space ahead. But the point is to break down those silos and bring new members into the tribe. And the number of people I'm seeing, you can only learn so much from a title, but the number of people I'm seeing with renewed or, or new interest in this subject matter is really promising, especially in the asset management world where a lot of this impact is happening. So the tribe is expanding. It definitely is. I'm curious about what you hope folks take away um, when they attend Greenfin 22. I mean, in the practical, pragmatic sense, I hope they take away actionable insights that they can take back to their institutions. I hope people get a better sense of what's behind all the acronyms, SFDR, TCFD, the EU taxonomy, the stuff that gets kind of wonky, and also get prepared for what's happening in the regulatory horizon. That's kind of a new phenomenon for the ESG space and not many people are quite certain about what that's going to affect in terms of their ESG strategy. But honestly, overall, going back to the community element, I hope people leave being able to reflect back on this kind of cohesive group as a community and not still exist as these nodes existing in the ESG ecosystem. And I think based on who I'm seeing come in so far, I'm quite confident that will be the case. So nitty gritty, like where, when, uh, what, you know. Well, the nitty gritty is fun for this event. <laughs> Chelsea Piers, Pier 60 in New York. We're putting people up at the standard High Line. It's about a seven minute walk away. I was there two weeks ago. I did the full experience. It's not as fun when you're by yourself, but I can't wait to join the 650 or 700 other people that will uh, uh, accommodate me. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful place. Statue of Liberty views. Dates? June 28th, 29th, 2022. <laughs> Key part of the logistics. Thanks for that reminder. Uh, yeah, and will you be able to help us with dinner reservations? Uh, we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll get in touch with your people. We'll see. But yes, looking forward to seeing. All right. So, so last thing, you got you got a track here. Um, so, what kind of things are you going to be talking about during your track? Yes, uh, I think I'm going to highlight one because it's the most crucial, in my opinion, at the moment. The world of ESG ratings and ESG standards have a lot that have happened in development and a lot that will happen in the coming year. And you will find our own Joel McCower moderating a panel with Tim Mohan from Persephone and a couple other folks um, from VRF and other institutions that are helping set these standards. And we're going to check in on ESG standards, the state of play. So that's my highlight. But I'm a fan of all seven sessions. Love them equally. <laughs> awesome. So we've been talking with Grant Harrison, Green Business Zone, Green Finance, and ESG Analyst. Welcome, Grant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.